sure it's just the right place for you. Uh, the, uh, welcome to my prison, as people do say. I think my cat is behind me as well. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we're moving into the second series of the day, and it's going to be between these two teams right here. Uh, let's actually move on over to the main overlay. There we go. It's going to be between Ash and Naz. <laughs> and I am not going to skip Game 1, Kingdom. I'm very, very sorry. We are starting with Game game 1. But as you can see, Ash versus Naz. Ash not had a win on the board yet. So they are going to be looking to get their first win right now. It's They can't make it to the playoffs, unfortunately, for Round 1. But there's still three more rounds to go. And all is not lost. So let's actually have a look at what the matches are going to be today. And what the maps are going to be as well. So as I said before, we're starting off with Judgment Day. Moving on to Sincha Pongryung. Moving on to New Empire of the Sun. Ending over to Pathfinder. And finishing off with a Gladiator. Now let's have a look at the order of the matches. And let's see the players. It's going to be Goody versus Kingdom. Kicking us off with a PvP. A TVP following that on Sincha Pongryung. Dentarg versus Batorsai in a PvP on uh, New Empire of the Sun. And finally, in the fourth game, we will have Mind Flayer versus Dragon in a CvP on Pathfinder. Uh, Dragon has got CvP on Pathfinder a couple of times, I think. Let's actually just have a look at the players. It's going to be Goody versus Kingdom. Now, Goody has actually not really shown up to most of his games, so it's good that he has actually shown up here. Not going to make any walkovers or anything crazy like that, which is good. And Kingdom doing very well for his team. 2-0 at the moment. Can he make it 3? Let's hope that his message in the chat was not a spoiler. Uh, but Goody going to be looking to get his first win on the table. Of course, this is only the first round of the SDPL. There are three more rounds after this. Many, many more games to play for all of the players. But they are going to be playing on Judgment Day. Very, very cool map. We've had a couple of PvPs on here so far. Uh, interesting, given the fact they're sending most Protosses out here. When Zerg have been dominating on this map in the SDPL so far. So, uh, kind of crazy. But, let's move on to the game. And let's get started with our second series of today. Okay, just checking all the overlays right. I think it is. Let's start. Let's make sure the sound effects are on. And starting us off in the top right position, we do have playing for Naz. It's going to be Kingdom. And spawning down here in the bottom left position, we do have... Wait, I got the names wrong, didn't I? Okay, in the bottom left position, we have Kingdom fighting for Naz. And in the top right position, we do have the Teal Protoss. It's going to be the uh, Terran from StarCraft 2 and an old school Protoss player. It's going to be Goody fighting for Ash. Now, uh, unfortunately, I did get the names mixed up a bit. Today has been a very, very long day. But, uh, of course, this is the start of the second series. It's 10pm in the UK, and I am very much looking forward to seeing this. If I turn up to work tired, they are going to have to deal with it, because this is more important right now. i uh, got to get all these games casted. want to make sure Whoops, uh, all of the uh, players are going to have a lot of games to see as well. And uh, Paco Loco is sounding a lot like um, a lot like Lucky Noob. I don't know if it is him, but if it's not, uh, Lucky Noob also likes purple to Rotas. And of course, Eon likes purple Zerg, so pretty cool. I, I like how people have their own color preferences. And there are so many Protosses because it is the foreign brood war scene. And there is a lot of Protoss in the foreign brood war scene, if we're going to be completely honest. Like, yes, some of them race pick CVP, but a lot of them do enjoy PvP, and I, I don't really blame them. It's a really cool and fun matchup to play, quite dynamic. Lots of different things that you can do in it. Uh, looks like we're actually going to have a slight differenti uh, differentiation. In Bill's already good, he did actually go for that gas. Uh, Kingdom going to go for two Zealots uh, out of his gateways, so going to be looking to put on a little bit of extra pressure. Uh, but this could be a very quick game but either way. Of course, if this Zealot all-in does not work, uh, Kingdom is going to be incredibly far behind. 
Uh, but the good news is for Kingdom is he scouted where his opponent is, and he is going to be able to send his units over straight away. And this Zealot from Goody is actually delayed quite a bit here. And oh man, here we go. There's actually, I believe there's some mana pylon. Yes, it is. Uh, it's really hard to tell because of the colors. And if I do shift tab, they're both yellow, so it doesn't help. Uh, but yeah, that is actually a mana pylon. It's going to block this probe in. And this could be a very dangerous position for Goody to be in. Looks like Goody's going to scout the Zealot on its way. Uh, not really too much that probe can do about it, though. And I get the feeling this could be a very, very quick game. That pylon, still very difficult to tell the colours. The only difference is this band around it. There's no sort of cool particle effect or anything to look at to try and differentiate that. But not really too much to say. This pylon's definitely going to go down. Uh, but these Zealots going to be looking to make their way into the main base. And of course, IOPQ, I realize that the Protoss wouldn't matter himself, but I mean, when it's building, you can't actually see what can't, like who built it, which is my point. It's not so much the mana pylon itself, it's just the act of building as Protoss. Like, there's no... There's no way of telling a Protoss building is what color, so not really too much to do there, but the... Okay, that looks confusing as hell, but that Zealot's going to go down, but there's two more Zealots here, and they could do a lot of damage. They're going to move into the main. The first Dragoon is out. Uh, Kingdom Zealots seem to be taking a very long time to get her. Of course, this is cross-map, uh, but some of these probes should go down now. Looks like the Zealot is actually bugged out. This, oh my god, this is so unfortunate. Gets bugged out and stuck in a probe. And this, uh, this two Zealot attacks hasn't really done anything here. So really, really nicely held by Goody there. A little bit unfortunate by Kingdom. He could have done a lot of damage, but a little bit of bugging out on a Zealot movement kind of screwed him over there. Not even going to get a second probe, I don't think. There we go. He does get a second probe, but that is not going to be worth it for him. He's actually got a probe in the base still. Uh, I mean, he could do something crazy like build a proxy in the base or something like that, but I, I highly doubt we're going to see that. We actually see some cannons being made. At Kingdom's Natural, or at his third base, he wants to try and secure his base behind this, and it's gonna be, <laughs> gonna be very bad. But yeah, both uh, both Kingdom Zealots actually bugged out on top of probes and didn't do any damage. So a little bit unfortunate. Gonna have the build on a disadvantage now, and that's why it did look like he would have the advantage, but unfortunate for him. Now, of course, this is a PvP, so it could still go both ways. Uh, a lot of mirror matchups do come down to how well you manage the units, how well you manage the uh, worker building and stuff like that. And Kingdom has certainly shown a strong performance so far in the SCPL. Now somehow, this probe is still alive. The Dragoon actually just left it alive for some reason. Uh, but it should go down now, there's not really too much you can do about that. But he does get a full scout out on the base. Does know exactly what's going on. Sees the Citadel. Now, is it going to be a Templar Archives behind this? Because if it is, that'd be a huge, huge mistake. There's four cannons here already. And the Templar Archives would not do a single thing. It's not going to be, though. It's going to be a Nexus. And the, uh, the Citadel could be a little bit of a fake. Of course, he can move into Zealot speed. Uh, Zealot legs there. But here we go. Looks like the Dragoon's going to push in. Going to find the cannons. Uh, not going to be able to really do too much damage. Cannons do a lot of damage to Dragoons. Like, I know cannons do flat damage, but... Like, when you watch uh, cannon shoot Dragoons in PvP, they do a lot... Now, this is a very questionable choice. Maybe he's going to go into Storm, but I get the feeling going into DTs at this point would be a massive blunder. He does know that there is cannons here. Kingdom has done a pretty good job of doing that. Kingdom's actually going to go into its expansion before Goody does... And of course there could be a drop here, is there going to be a robo as well? Uh, DT drop could be quite strong, but it does. he does have the ability to obviously build a cannon as main. But there's no robo as of yet, uh, but I'd like to see him go into Storm here I think, and just play for the later game. Storm of course very very powerful. In late game PvP does a lot of damage to Zealots, does a lot of damage to Dragoons as well. And just overall a very very good spell. Now of course he could be going for High Templar drop. And it looks like that's what it's going to be. Storm is researching. There are these cliffable naturals here. You can see a little bit better on this spawn. Uh, but you can put a high temper up here and storm the minerals. And that would be a very, very huge maneuver. Uh, interestingly, Goody still on two gateways. He hasn't really been able to afford any more. And of 
I mean, just to be safe, Kingdom has added a cannon in both of his mineral lines. Okay, this is going to be a pylon, but there's probably going to be a cannon here as well. Uh, but this is a very, very, very interesting game here. Now, Robotic Sicily is coming in, so I do think we are going to see that High Templar drop here. And Goody adding pylons to his natural as well. Probably going to add a cannon at each mineral line just to be safe himself. Uh, but of course he does have the initiative, he's got the army advantage right now, it's a lot of Dragoons against pretty much just Zealots and Cannons. Now, the one important thing to know about Cannons, guys, is just in case you don't know, Cannons cannot move. If you think about it, this is, uh, Cannons are 200 minerals, I think, or 150. Uh, but either way, that's a, that's one, two, three, four, five, six cannons worth of minerals. I do believe it's 200, but I've never really played Protoss, so I'm not too sure of the building costs, but either way, that's a lot of minerals that could have been gateways, could have been units, and could have been tech. Now, Kingdom, there's going to be a little bit of diversity here. Kingdom's going straight into the robo. Gonna skip... Oh, it is 150. Okay, thank you very much. So that's about... Three... Okay, you know what? I'm not doing maths on stream. It's going to be 900 minerals worth of cannons then. That's a lot of minerals. That's 8 dragoons, 9 zealots. Uh, that's 4 gateways. So like, there's a lot of things. Well, not. Yeah, 4 gateways. There's a lot of things you can build with those. <laughs> 150. Oh, welcome. Uh, you've just finished the campaign, so that's a pretty cool thing for you to come into. Uh, not sure how much exposure you've had to the StarCraft competitive scene before, but. Uh, this is like foreign and sort of Koreans mixing together in games, and it's been a lot of fun so far. Uh, there's obviously a lot of events going on outside of the SCPL as well, so uh, do tune into those. ASL, of course, a very big one. But my, uh... Okay. Let's hope I've not just given myself cramp in my toe or broken my toe somehow, because that would be incredibly incredibly um, embarrassing if I broke my toe on stream somehow. But no, unfortunately, there are no North Koreans playing StarCraft right now. Hopefully we will get to a day where there will be peace in the Korean Peninsula and North Koreans will be able to enjoy Brood War with their children and their South Korean relatives. I know we're a long way off of that at the moment, but one can always hope. Uh, but let's actually see what's going on. Third Nexus coming up for both players. This is a very, very passive PvP right now. I mean, Goody had the tech to go for a High Templar drop a long time ago, and he didn't go for it. So, Goody doesn't want to throw away his position. He does have a slight lead, uh, both economically and uh, army-wise. And of course, Goody's only built two cannons, I believe, so... That's only 300 minerals in comparison to the 900 that was used. Now, I almost feel like I've missed something, because like, nothing is really happening so far. Uh, it is PvP, sometimes you do get this. And you know what, I think I did actually make a huge mistake starting the series. I've just remembered, Goody's games can go on for like an hour. <laughs> and if Goody's game goes on for an hour here, this could be a very, very painful night for me, and a very painful day at work as well. Uh, but thank you very much for the follow once again. Uh, just in case you guys don't know, I think there's a prize pool currently of about $820 or something. Uh, there's no more Matarino codes left, but well, I'm going to see if I can speak to Matarino and get a few more of those. But here we go, it looks like Goody going to move in, going to try and do some damage. He's suddenly got 20 supply in advantage right now. So we have a lot of High Templar coming in with a lot of Storm available on them. And some Archons as well. Uh, so this is going to be kind of crazy. Now here we go. The uh, the attack has been activated. A nice storm going down on these back Dragoons. This could be very, very powerful. The Zealots getting on top of the cannons as well. This could be the push that ends the game. Maybe this is why Kingdom was a little bit disappointed. But a nice storm once again on top of all of the Dragoons. Doing a lot of damage here. Here's Goody. Goody still 20 supply up nearly 30 at this point and I mean it looks like Kingdom may be able to just hold on if he has perfect micro but no this is just so much damage going in and Kingdom after all of that like five to seven minutes of build up 
and Kingdom's army gets completely decimated. The tech advantage for Goody is just far too great. This Nexus is going to go down. This Archon nearly gets into the natural as well. And that would be incredible. That would do so much damage. But so many units coming in. A, a train of High Templar here. This, uh, this Zealot actually just pulling them along. But the third goes down. The natural is more than likely going to go down as well. And oh my god, this could be a huge storm. Is he going to storm the probes? There's so many probes there. Oh my god, a huge storm. 10, 11 kills on that High Templar. That is going to be the nail in the coffin here for poor kingdom and goody looks like he will be taking ash up 1-0 the more high templar have actually come in i think a lot of them have either been wait when did the other oh there they are they're all hit gg storms go down and nothing kingdom can do about that he loses natural as well and goody will take the series whatever will get will get his first win in the sdpl Okay, so let's move back on over to my screen so I can get the overlay ready for the next game. Uh, just going to make sure that game is reported as well. Uh, really, really nicely played by Goody there. And let's actually have a look at who our next players are going to be.